um, have this shown here for the last several years. Uh, the, we're, and we're, of course, proud and excited about the work that's here. Uh, it's uh, very exciting for us, and uh, I'm so glad that so many of you could come in. So I'm going to keep my words super, super short. I just wanted to thank you all for coming. Uh, and now I want to introduce uh, Kelsey Lee from GMC and have him say a few words. Thank you. Good evening. How are you? for being here, especially on this cold night. Um, I am so proud of our partnership with the Leslie Lohman Museum. Thank you so much. And I'm, yes. And I am so proud and in awe of the talent that you see around us. I knew that the four walls of GMHC contained a lot of talent. I just didn't realize how much. And every year, this event shows me exactly how talented our artists are. So to all the artists, thank you so much for being part of this. And none of this would be possible without our two curators, David Livingston and Osvaldo Perdomo. It's the 10th anniversary for GMAC having this exhibition at the Loman. And this year we have an amazing group of artists uh, all living with HIV. And we have 50 artists participating in the show this year. And the theme is Alegria. Alegria means happiness. And I always, uh, when we became uh, familiar with this theme, we were like, why? If some of the artists were having a problem. Why Alegria? I have a problem with this theme. Alegria is something that I think is easy to do because that's where we live, that's how we survive to this day. I'm a, I've seen in the beginning when people were dying and nobody was there for, and that was the creation of GMHC, getting together to take care of each other. So that has gone on and extended to bigger families other than just the gay community. And that's one of the reasons I like to volunteer. And when you're first diagnosed, you don't want AIDS to define who you are. Is that, a lot of people say, oh, well, I don't want to be like showing stuff about how I feel about that. But uh, so Alegria makes perfect sense because we're celebrating the things we love to do. If it's photography or sculpture or multimedia where you're playing with things. And so I'll agree it was al is always there. I know that when I was diagnosed, it just makes you appreciate everything. When you walk around and you go, people are like not spending the time to even sit and like look at each other, and just breathe and be in the park. My work here is done in the Leslie Loman workshops on Prince Street, uh, where like 25 to 30 artists get together to draw the male nude, celebrating the male nude. So uh, these were done, they're done within 20 minutes on the spot with the watercolor. And the thing about why I picked these images, because I'll agree is a celebration of what is joyful. And I think the male figure is really, really beautiful and I'm there to celebrate it. That's I always draw from life and I got thousands and thousands of drawings. And as I went through them one day, I was starting to see mountains and fields as people were laying around and I thought it'd be nice to intentionally do that with the work so that I put um, David in front and then I just kind of started arranging him in different positions on my modeling platform and, and drew him in as I went along. So it's, it's kind of a series of uh, 20 minute and 10 minute drawings. It's definitely a love of life piece. I mean it's about, for me it's about um, an entire universe that can be found within and the happiness that happens from deep inside. The idea of tenderness and safety and love between people. So that's what I was trying to create with these images, uh, a deep sense of intimacy and safety. And then these um, I've always loved working with silhouettes and you know I believe that colors have a healing experience in them. 
I feel that there's something very spiritual about the images. Um, and they give hope. I am a recovering crystal meth addict and in the thralls of crystal meth, maybe I was using it to avoid realizing I was HIV positive or other issues like that. But once I became sober, I became very creative and um, part of GMHC and then I was able to create, I was doing things with triangles and suddenly pyramids became part of my um, artwork and I was using mixed medium of gold paint, silver paint and acrylic um, colors. And it came alive for me. It's like, I didn't think I would be so creative because at first it felt very simple to do triangles. It's almost like something I did as a kid with um, a sketch or rectangles, but it felt humanizing and um, thrilling to do it. And being part of GMHC and the art classes, I have to um, show appreciation for that because I was never that creative. I didn't really was interested in art that much. I was as a kid, but I didn't think I could make a career out of it. But after doing this artwork and um, others and um, being in classes and also I run a class as a facilitator at the GMHC, it um, gives me gratitude to be um, helping people who um, need that help. I survived and I more than survived. I learned to really enjoy life and see the joy of life. I had to go through a dark period and a severe illness to really appreciate the joy of life. I do digital photography, uh, lean more towards black and white. Um, this is, this is a, pretty much a, 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 a self, a, a kind of a self portrait and a landscape, so I'm calling it landscape. The different dimensions in life, I have these mirror reflections going on here, these different levels to the photograph, even though they're all flat to one level. Before that, I always kind of, romanticize the dark side of life and romanticize death, which I no longer do. When I was 19 years old, doctor told me that I was diagnosed with HIV. And my only one question to doctor was how long I will stay alive. She told me that usually people with HIV live about five to seven years. That was sounded like a death sentence to me. By the way, everything didn't happen in 80s or 90s, but in 2003 in St. Petersburg, second city in Russia, 21st century. Now is year 2019. I'm here in New York and I gave birth to a healthy kid, healthy mentally and physically. Now she's just turned six. So this is my personal allegory of life. Life is unpredictable and my life is a proof of this. And that allegory wouldn't be possible without best medical services which are available here in New York City and help of nonprofit organizations uh, who work in the field of education and assistance for people who live with HIV and AIDS, such as GMHC, gay men health crisis, such as uh, African services, and many other organizations who've been helping me on my path. Because of your work, I can live with dignity and have a normal life in a normal world. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of what you've been doing for me. And there is one more good thing in America, which called uh, pass it forward. So 50% from sales of my artwork, I would like to donate to GMHC so you can help someone else who need the help. The reason why I brought this piece is because even though we come to the United States looking for a better future, for some people this is an allegoria. This, uh, this, uh, you know, this robotics is that we grow into coming into America, it becomes uh, kind of superficial. So um, there's a, an allegoria postponing to it, a happiness to it. Uh, we provide for the people of the Americas, we provide to the whole world. So that's our allegoria, that's our happiness. Two years ago when we had our first last show, um, I did emojis and then 
the day we were taking on the show, that particular weekend, I went through a really uh, unexpected breakup after seven years. So I decided to throw myself into my artwork and create a piece that represented when you see it, you see a heart and you see a crack in the heart. So it was a broken heart, but as I painted it, it became a healing heart. And then I was inspired by a movie called Moon in, on Netflix that I happened to be watching, and it was a little bit of a love story, and it was a little bit of sad, and it was, I was emotionally crazy at that time. So it represents day and night. And the title of this particular artwork is called There's Always Time for Love, so that's why you see a little heart kind of float in there, because I knew that I might have been going through a breakup, and I was heartbroken, and that I would heal, but I would find love again. And so I've subsequently in a new relationship that's been working out very nicely. But I do a form of 3D pointillism. Um, so it's a traditional painting with tons of dots, and then I put these pins in, and then I paint all the pins, and then the twist is I, everything I do is black light sensitive. So they've been nice enough to supply this, and if you look at it sort of does its magic. Um, my artwork's been inspired for years from going to clubs, and so that's where my inspiration for creating this type of artwork is from. And uh, this took about a year and eight months, and it's got the most pins I've ever put into a painting. I have quite a few paintings, and this probably has about 4,000 pins. I make artists out of art out of just garbage junk, whatever's laying around, usually toxic plastic styrofoam, make garbage into art, save the planet. Hi, Tim. Um, this is Joan Crawford. I love Mommy Dearest, and, and you know, movies are a big part of, of my life and what really keeps me sane and happy. This is a mermaid, I just love her, and it's sort of a homage to uh, Wagner's Rheingold. Now this, I'm going through a um, <clears throat> Maurice Sendak phase um, for Postcards from the Edge, I did Max, and then I did this, this guy from the, uh, Where the Wild Things Are. And uh, <clears throat> so um, it's kind of fun. This is uh, my first exhibition, and I usually work in the format of doing digital video, video art. Um, so this is actually digital video, which has been filtered and then re-exported. Um, and with the help of Steve Menendez, we were able to get it up into a 300 DPI. It's called Pink Sanctuary because uh, the island is safe haven and there was something about the uh, mosquito net in the strong wind where it became like a jellyfish in the sky. Um, and then often what I do when I mirror in Rorschach things is I kind of find certain still frame images that kind of just speak to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to be in the show. This is my first exhibition and I'm super thrilled to be here amongst all the talent and the wonderful themes. I had a canvas at home and I started putting colors on it and I really didn't know what I was, what I was going to paint. And I had some photographs of a friend of mine and I, as colors start showing up, I, I started seeing body parts and I said, oh, okay. So I'm going to work with the torso. And I was having a conversation with one of my relatives and they said, what are you up to now? I said, I'm painting as we speak. And he was like, what are you seeing? So we were on, 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 the, on the phone together. I showed them the photograph and I was like, what do you see? And he said, I said, uh, behind. I see a woman's behind. I was like, where? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and actually I did see it. And then he was looking at here. So he was seeing this woman behind in there. And he said, well, I, it's that you're going to have a different, um, you're going to have straight uh, or, or, or gay audience uh, in the same painting. I said, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, the next day I got another friend texting me, what are you up to? And I sent him the picture. I said, what do you see? I'm painting this now. And it was in the beginning stages. And he said, I see a penis. I said, <laughs> I said, what is wrong with me? I don't see these things. And actually, if you see, I mean, you can see probably uh, the penis there. I actually, it was actually more in your face. I tone it down. But um, I don't know what wow. my, my subliminal mind was saying something to me. 
So the model name is Matthew. So since it's a, uh, this is like people saw different things. I was asking David, I don't even know what to name this piece. <laughs> and says, he said something about Mirage. So I said, mirage. Matthew, Red, Mirage. And but your last painting had the same thing. People saw different things. And yeah, it was an abstract as well. And um, well, this is, you know, I wasn't even going to give him a face. And, and I ended up um, doing so. And. I'm happy. I'm working on the second piece now, so um, I'm glad that I got the creativity juices back on, on order. I'm retiring from the, the board now. So it's my exiting mm, next month, so I will have more time to do other fun stuff besides for work, which I enjoy tremendously as well. So that's... Uh, it's good to be here, and it's good to be participating, not only curating, but participating uh, among the talent of all of you. So thank you. Uh, uh, the art is for sale. The art is also going directly to the artist. No money is coming to GMAC or to the Loman. This is an opportunity to help the artists, especially those who are living on disability, and have a partial income. So this is a really uh, a great opportunity for them to show their work, but also to sell it. So if you can support them, please do. Thank you. What does it mean for you, uh, Alegria of living with the HIV? What we say is uh, um, acceptation. So you ask, accept yourself, exactly where you are, and consist this is another time in life. Like you, it's a lesson. And you learn from the lesson. You end that lesson or no. But enjoy life. It's the only thing you do. Because every morning, I call myself and I say, I love you. Really, really, I love you. And I go to Jimmy City do art, and I really like it. And they have an amazing art program. So I usually go every week and do art and express myself with my art. And uh, I love art. I was an art teacher years ago, but now I retire now. So now I just go to GMAC and just do art and create and make beautiful art. Being part of over 20 years for me is like a, a life experience. And it's for me, it's like I need to grow. So that's what it means to me. And with and just because you're positive, you can do anything in life. It doesn't matter. So that's what means, that was matters to me. My process started about three years ago when I was in the shelter, and I just had to draw, but I didn't know what to draw. So I just started making like a physical meditation on a paper. And then I would turn the paper and keep drawing and turn it and keep drawing. And then through the GMHC, I was able to take a painting class. And the teacher saw my drawings. He said, these are great. These are brilliant. Um, and I said, please help me turn this into a painting. And so, you know, three years later, this is kind of where I am. Just these are physical meditations, uh, just unintentional paintings to get whatever it is that's inside of me out. And that's basically how it works. Surrendering to your process, surrendering to just doing something and not worrying about the outcome and just accepting what comes. And that, that in, and of, in and of itself is is a complete uh, peace and joy in life. I was born in New York, but this is the first time I've been in New York since um, I was born as an adult. This right here, I came out of uh, a mentally and physically abusive relationship. And since I came here, I've seen a lot of brightness, a lot of happiness. Like you can see all the little dark spots in there. That's some of my past. But it's a lot of, it's the last dance that I'm going to have fun with my last dance. The joy of life is to, is to have fun to the fullest. It's to just enjoy it to the fullest each day. Always have fun, laugh, have fun. 49 artists, 89 art pieces, and 10 years at the moment. This is amazing. Um, the artists do phenomenal work every year that we do this. Um, it just gets better and better, and I'm just so proud of these guys. I'm hoping that uh, the Loman keeps going with this and spreads it nationally and worldwide.